Hello and welcome to another episode of This Week in Goldmaking presented by Darkshore Capital. It's currently August 30th, 2018. We're going to move into the market update for the week. A few interesting things to note. BFA items continue to be on a bit of a downturn, both US and EU. Just that gnarled mood ring on the EU seems to still be increasing. Not a huge surprise there since it's a incredibly highly desired item. Also, the Starlight Rose price, which we had seen increasing in the U.S. quite dramatically, has seemed to drop back down. So that's probably a good sign since that seemed a little suspicious to start with. Last thing I wanted to point out, I've not been able to find an updated price for an AOTC run on the U.S. side of things. So if anybody has any information about that, I would love to hear from you guys. And EU side, I was able to find one as low as 150,000 gold. So... Seems like a lot more people are offering those these days, causing competition to drive the price down. Let's move in to some news for the week. Blizzard applied a hotfix that increased the amount of gold reward from some World Quest emissaries from 700 up to 2,000 gold, which is a pretty sizable chunk of change for just PvE content. It's honestly probably one of the highest gold rewards we've ever seen for anything in the game. I, I can't think of any others that have, have reached that high. And while it's not a huge amount of gold, especially compared to the amount of gold you can make if you're seriously gold making, that is a, a decent amount of gold that's gonna be added to the economy over the next you know year or two, since people are gonna continue to do emissaries, especially those turtle ones, because man, hmm. for me at least, that was the last reputation I got up to revered. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So anytime the emissary pops up, people are going to be doing them. And now even more because, hey, free 2,000 gold, that's like one repair bill, right? So something interesting to keep an eye on. Uh, some concerns about inflation there, which, I don't know, maybe we'll discuss that again at a future video. First feature I want to talk about today is a remote auction house replacement. So the remote auction house, as we all know, was removed a while back. And every now and again, I see people asking about viable replacement for it. Will it come back, et cetera, et cetera. So the technology to do what I'm proposing here has been around for a while. And I've actually been doing this for quite a while with uh, a couple different pieces of software. And it's very possible that there are better options than what I'm going to uh, talk about here right now. I haven't personally tried out anything else, but this is what works for me. So there's this application called TeamViewer which you download onto your desktop computer or laptop computer that runs World of Warcraft. And what that allows you to do is if you also have the application on say your phone or your iPad or another laptop, you can connect to your home computer using a, a code password combination. And that'll allow you to remotely control your home computer from a remote location. Now this allows you to use World of Warcraft with TSM auction house data intact, which is nice because it keeps continuity with your accounting, your operations, all that good stuff. Now, as you might imagine, we're not going to go into details about how to set up TeamViewer. That'll be saved for its own video at a future point, but it's, it's fairly straightforward to do so. Uh, I've got the link here and you just go to the website, download it. They've got plenty of tutorials you can follow along in order to use it. But there are a few things that I wanted to talk about in order to make your quality of life much easier, regardless of what remote application you choose to do this with. So since you're controlling your computer remotely, there's going to be quite a bit of delay, especially if you are you know, a sizable distance physically in the world away from your home computer. Uh, using WASD and the mouse to turn, it's going to be a little tricky and probably not going to work very well. So there's actually an option within World of Warcraft that's called click to move. And this is uh, an augment to the normal movement abilities. And when it's enabled, a right click anywhere on the world will cause your character to move towards that location. This is super handy with remote access because you can just click, do whatever the right click functionality for your remote application is next to the mailbox, say, and your character will go over next to the mailbox. Then you can click on the mailbox. Super handy. Uh, and a definite huge boost quality of life when using remote auction or remote access to your computer. The other thing you can do to kind of just you know remove that necessary or uh, that 
that need entirely is choose an auction house that is accessible to all the things you need. My personal favorite is the one in Booty Bay. It's next to both a, well, all four of Guild Bank, Bank, Auctioneer, and Mailbox, all within clicking distance of one spot. The one downside that is, you know, always a concern with that one is the banker and the auctioneer can be killed by players that want to farm Booty Bay Rep, for example. Or, sorry, you're farming uh, the Pirate Rep, not Booty Bay Rep. You're, <laughs> you're not going to be farming Rep for Booty Bay for killing Booty Bay people. But uh, I digress. The auction houses in the shrines of Missa Pandaria, I believe, are good options as well. I'm not super familiar with those ones, so I won't speak too much to them. I do know that you need to level to at least, I believe, 5 or 10 in order to acquire engineering to allow access to those auction houses. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention with the remote applications is using potentially two separate installations of World of Warcraft, or maybe not even necessarily two separate installations, but just separate settings. So having to turn this click to move thing on and off uh, when you're using your game remotely can be kind of a pain. So what I actually do is I have two completely separate installations on my hard drive that I use for two separate accounts, actually. And the second account is pretty much the one that I would ever use when uh, doing this remote stuff. And I have the settings turned way down, the screens or the, uh, the window size turned way down just to use less resources, make it easier to use remotely. And that way you don't have to be futzing with all that nonsense when you want to play the game versus when you want to remotely access. It's also possible to do this with one account using symbolic links. I'm not going to get into that too much here, but I will add a link to the video description to a Reddit post, which does describe how to do it in case you're interested in that. And that should give you what you need to know. It is a bit of an advanced topic, but can be very useful and save you on hard disk space if that's something that is of concern to you. To move on to the second item I wanted to talk about tonight, a friend of mine who is not a World of Warcraft player, but knows that I am, sent me a link to an interesting, let's call it loophole in the programming of World of Warcraft that allows for some pretty scary stuff to happen. So there's a link to the article if you'd like to read it. And I'm going to try and summarize and break down a little bit what's happening here and just inform you about how you can stay safe, what to watch out for, and just try to explain what's going on. It is a little bit technical, so bear with me here. We're going to have to talk about some programming. So the programming language that World of Warcraft's interface is built off of. It's called Lua. You might have heard that. L-U-A. You might have heard that thrown around places. And it's pretty cool. It can do some interesting stuff. And one of the things that happens every time a chat message is sent to you, a process gets run where any extra white space, any space characters that might have gone in that message are just removed before it's displayed to you. This is so, you know, if somebody says, starts typing a whisper to you, it says, hello there, space, 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 space. What's your name? When that gets sent to you, the, the game basically says, all right, we don't need all these extra spaces, get rid of those. So that's nice. However, Lua, the programming language that World of Warcraft's interface is built off of, has this interesting and very helpful, but also kind of scary feature where one procedure or function as it's called can be completely replaced with another one. So what that means is somebody, or what you can do is instead of having the game replace all your white space with not white space, it can say, I don't know, give access to somebody else to start doing things in your game. That's kind of scary. And this is where it gets a little bit technical. We're, gonna, we're not going to go into that. But essentially, if you run the specific command, it's linked in the article, on your, on your World of Warcraft installation, it can give access to anyone else to start just doing whatever they want with scripting languages in your game. And that's pretty scary. But it does take you explicitly typing in a specific command into your chat to do this. So as long as you're not doing that and you're not downloading any unscrupulous add-ons that might be doing that for you, it should be okay. But I have uh, tried tweeting at the Blizzard devs, let them know about this because it's pretty scary and it should probably get fixed. So yeah, I don't know, just stay safe, read the article if you want any more details and don't go running random commands that people are telling you are gonna like make you rich or something because that just that's just silly, so don't do that. 
Anyway, not to scare anyone, but let's get into some Q&A for the week. So we've got a few questions here. First one is, what markets are increasing in value? Now, this question is kind of getting at uh, what's a good investment for me in the long run. Now, what my observation has been over the course of gold making in World of Warcraft is mm, depreciation tends to be the case for most items. And the ones that do increase over time are either very liquid, aka hard to sell when you need to sell them, or just not that big of a growth potential. So it's really not worth it. So what I actually answer, my answer to this question is, uh, don't invest in particular items necessarily, but instead look for things to increase your capability to make gold. And essentially what that means is rare recipes. Things like the Vial of the Sands or Panther Mounts or just even like rare crafted transmog recipes. Uh, everyone knows my favorite website, the, uh, <laughs> the Recipe Checker. This can be a fantastic resource for finding rare recipes that other people might not have. And if you acquire these and start crafting them, oops, wrong character, you can start making lots of gold. I've done this with blacksmithing and tailoring, and I suggest you do the same. You know, some of these world drops, the, the fell steel long blade is a classic example. Uh, obviously, that's one that a lot of people know, and the recipe is very expensive, but it's a, it's a good example, right? You pay a lot up front, but you can make these things for the entirety of your existence, and they are popular, and they will sell for lots of gold. So instead of investing in items, I suggest invest in yourself or your characters and their recipes. Next question. Is expanding into pet trading viable if I have no previous experience with pets? The short answer to this question is yes. The long answer is mm, you might want to think twice about it. So, and actually the reason, sorry, let me say that again. The answer, the short answer is yes, and that's part of the problem. It's it's very straightforward to get into pet trading because it's it's very simple. You buy pets cheap and you sell them at their market value or higher. Easy gold. However, because this is so simple to do, lots of people have done it. There is a lot of competition in this market. Be warned. It's very simple to get into, which means everyone and their mother is doing it. So <laughs> making gold takes a while. I've you know been doing my foray into pet trading for quite a while now. And I don't see sales very often. And it, it is kind of time consuming too, because you have to be listing on, you know, 10 plus different servers to get a different, you know, a, a wide enough breadth across the market to get consistent sales and you have to have enough stock. And then, you know, not only just logging into all the servers and relisting, it takes a lot of time. So something to think about, it is easy to get into and you don't really need to know how to do pets, but neither does anyone else. Next question. Easiest way to make gold in BFA for newly returning players? Question mark. Most efficient time-wise. So this is kind of a fairly straightforward question. You know, how do you make gold? That's what everyone wants to know. And typically my answer to this is, you know, it's, it's not that easy, right? You can't just make gold. You, there's no easy way to just make tons of gold the most efficient way possible. So my answer is going to be two parts, answering the most efficient part and the ease of getting into part. So as far as just an easy way to get into making gold in BFA, you're probably best off just getting a gathering profession or two and just going and gathering. It's very straightforward, very easy to understand, and it makes gold. Personally, it's not my cup of tea, but it's very simple to understand, and it's a great way to get started. There's plenty of guides out there on routes, on how to efficiently do stuff. I suggest you check those out. Uh, Want to Buy Gold has a fantastic YouTube channel sorry, YouTube channel, with lots of great guides on gathering and a gathering challenge, which I may or may not be participating in in the near future. But yeah, that's a good way to start, gathering. As far as most efficient, it's really got to be flipping, hands down. The amount of time spent uh, searching for items to flip and then posting them, it, it just pales in comparison to anything else you could possibly do for gold. Now, granted, it takes a lot more time in the real world for this to manifest as actual money, but as far as in-game time actually spent doing the work, it's just absolutely not a lot at all. Bregvids has plenty of videos about why this is, and I agree with him 100%. So that's the most efficient way. Flip BOEs, 
flip high quality items, flip expensive items. But again, you need a lot of startup capital and knowledge about the markets to make that a thing. So maybe not the best thing for returning players. Lastly, I wanted to address this question. Is it legal to sell raid runs for gold? Yes, it is. Now, I believe this question was asked in response to the post that was made, I believe, in the main WoW subreddit about members of a prominent guild being banned for selling runs. Now, the reason, my understanding is that the reason those players were banned was because one person out of their raid had actually sold runs or exchanged real life money for the run in some way. And that's a bit of a scary prospect because all it takes is one bad egg to cause your entire run to get banned. And I don't know. It's it's just kind of part of the risk that you run when you do these gold runs because Blizzard has come out and said explicitly it's fine to exchange gold for in-game services. That's no question. However, if one person is taking real money for these services, how does how's Blizzard to know that that one person isn't also sharing that money with the other people in some other way outside of World of Warcraft? So kind of sucks that uh, it can be ruined by one person, but that's, uh, that's Blizzard's policy. No tolerance. So there you go. The answer, simple answer, yes. Long answer, make sure the people you run with are trustworthy. And on that note, we're going to wrap it up for this week. If you like the episode uh, and have any questions, feel free to leave them below. You can find me on Twitter as well, ask a question or have a chat about gold making. Always happy to do that. You can also reach me via email, darkshorecapital at gmail.com. That's all I got for you guys this week, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.